Hi everyone, welcome back to our Winging It 2023 project. We're making our garden quilt and we're on block four. Now, if you haven't seen any of our other videos in this series, I will link a playlist at the top of the screen so that you can go back and catch up if you want to. We're going to try a new technique this week and if you watched our Winging It videos last year, you may have come across this technique already. We're going to try reverse applique and I'm going to start with my 20 centimetre block. I've chosen this bright blue, I think it's going to work really well for the design I've got in mind this week. I've got some other scraps of different fabrics as well. So I've got a yellow stripe, that's the one we use for our background in week one. I've also got a yellow spot. I've got a plain yellow and I've just got this scrap of brown that I fished out of my stash. Now brown might seem like a strange colour to choose for a garden quilt but we are going to need some soil somewhere so brown will crop up every now and again. Not too much but here and there. I've got a template for this week's project and you can find it at our website. I've put the address at the bottom of the screen and I will put a link in the description below as well. There's a small charge for it, just one British pound and it just helps me keep this channel running. So you can download that. Do make sure that when you print it out, you print actual size rather than a scaled version of it so just look at your printer settings and make sure you've clicked on actual size it's all sized ready for you and you should find that when you print it out the outside square measures 20 by 20 centimeters this will make it really easy for you it's not a complicated design but it will allow you to just trace your pattern straight onto your fabric so that's what I'm going to do first I'm just going to line up my square with the outside square on the pattern and I'm going to be using a light box. Now you don't have to go out and buy a light box. You could, if you wanted to, just put some washi tape just at the top of your fabric. You want something quite low tack, so washi tape's ideal. If you tape your fabric to the pattern and then hold it up to a window, I've got a window just in front of me and if I just tip the fabric and the pattern forward you should just be able to see the pattern shining through there. I might need to iron my work during the process and I'm going to use a different tool this week. I've got here a liquid ink water erase pen and I actually bought this at the supermarket. This is not from a specialist shop. It's a fairly miraculous product because it erases with just the tiniest bit of water so if I just draw on this bit of scrap fabric I've got a misting spray here and if I just mist it I've just sprayed twice there and you can see the ink disappears almost instantly it won't erase though if I iron it so this is going to help me keep my pattern in place all the time that I'm working with it. So I'm just going to draw around the outside of the pattern. It's not that straightforward because I'm working blue on blue, but it does show up. I haven't seen these pens in a lot of colours. They're mostly blue, but I can see it. It does show up fairly well. So now I've traced my pattern onto my fabric. I'm just going to take you around the resources on my table. I've got some normal sewing cotton. I'm going to just use this to tack different layers together. I've got a selection of embroidery threads. So I've got the greens that I've been working with so far. Anchor 258 is my dark green. My light green is Anchor 255. I've got my white, which I might use, which is Anchor 001. And I've got my bright yellow, which I keep using week in, week out. That's Anchor 298. And I've brought in a couple of other shades of yellow. So I've got a pale yellow here, which is Anchor 300. It's a nice buttery shade. And then I've got a more orange yellow, which is Anchor 444. And then I've got some browns. I don't know which of these I'll use. I've got a lighter one and I don't know what colour this one is because I didn't write it down. It's an anchor thread, I can tell by the feel of it, but just a shade of brown that matches. 
So the first thing we're going to do is make a fabric sandwich. Now I'm struggling a little bit because I can't quite see through to the back of my fabric and so I'm just going to put some dots in my heat erase pen just so that I know where the extremities of the petals are. That's just going to help me position my fabrics. Now full disclosure this um, piece of brown fabric is 12.5 centimeters it came as part of a charm pack of some quilting materials and i initially had printed out my pattern in a way that was scaled and so this fitted perfectly when i printed it out at actual size the pieces no longer fitted on the sunflower when i put them on square so if i put put it on as a square you can see the tips of the petals are still showing but if I line it up diagonally it does actually cover all of the petals so that's how I'm going to arrange it so I'm going to start with my yellow flat colour because I don't want my patterns to show through onto the blue and this one almost acts as a liner I'm just lining it up so that all of those dots that I put in to mark the petals are covered. And so I'm just going to line up the rest of my fabrics on top of that, putting the brown one at the bottom because that's the darkest one. It's most likely to show through. And I'm just going to hold all those together and flip it over to just check with my fingers. I can feel the edges of the fabric. I'm just going to check that all of my petals are covered and just make a couple of slight adjustments if I need to. So now I'm going to pin that sandwich to my main surface fabric. I'm just going to put pins in the four corners because that's giving me some space away from the petals to just work. So I've just put four pins in there and that's just going to hold those fabrics in place while I tack it. I've switched to a darker thread because I wanted it to show up a little bit more. So I've knotted the end and I'm taking my needle through from front to back because I want that knot on the surface. It's going to make it easier for me to remove my tacking stitches. And then I'm just going to put some large running stitches around the outside of that little fabric sandwich that's on the back. Just got a tangle straight away. <laughs> my thread is far too long really here. Now, if you want to try another reverse applique project, I've got a whole video on applique techniques and I'll link that at the top of the screen. As I'm sewing around, what I need to make sure of is that I'm not stitching in puckers and folds into my fabric. So once I've done one side, I'm just going to smooth out the fabric and make sure that it's nice and flat and even and just to hold that in place it's obviously quite a large panel I'm just going to put a cross stitch at the center just to save that fabric from bagging out at the center and causing any problems when I'm putting my reverse applique together And we need to work from the inside out. If you work from the outside in, what you're likely to do is pull the fabric into the centre and create puckers and ridges. So what we want to do is smooth our fabric out to the edges as we go. So I'm going to start by stitching the circle at the centre of my sunflower. So I've got two strands of my dark brown embroidery thread here and I want to stitch on the line. I'm going to use back stitch for this because we want to make a solid outline of each shape and so back stitch works really well. So I'm just bringing my needle up to the surface and if you're not sure about back stitch I will link a tutorial at the top of the screen but we work backwards first so I've brought my needle through and I'm going backwards one stitch length. Then I want to come forwards two stitch lengths so that my needle comes out a stitch length away from the start of that first stitch. So there's now a gap between my working thread and the first stitch and I go back again 
to the beginning of that first stitch and close up that gap. So I've just brought the camera in a bit closer so you can see a bit better what I'm doing. So I've come forward a double stitch length to create a gap between my working thread and the previous stitch and then I go back on myself to meet that previous stitch and close the gap up. And you can see on the back it's a solid line there as well. Now if I was just working with a single layer of fabric I could create these stitches in a hooking motion so I go in and back out again in one movement but if I take it to the back you can see I barely caught the fabric there and I want a solid line so I would recommend doing this in two motions so going down through the fabric in one motion and then coming back up through the fabric in a second motion just making sure your needle is perpendicular to the fabric and that way you're going to get a solid line of stitches on the front and on the back you get the idea what I'm doing I'm just going to finish that circle and then we'll come back and look at the next stage so I've stitched all the way around my flower centre there and now I'm going to work on the petals so I've got my bright yellow thread here I've got two strands again it's the anchor 298 and I'm going to do exactly the same process around the edges of these petals so I'm working in back stitch and I'm starting just at the centre of the flower I want those lines to meet up I don't want any gaps here so I've started in a way that's brought the line of yellow into contact with the line of brown and I just work my way up the petal there now I've got a bit of a problem because my threads have separated so I just wanted to show you how to fix that so I've got hold of the ends of the threads and I'm going to take my needle all the way down to the surface of the fabric and just smooth out those threads and then when I pull my needle back those two threads will line up again now this is something that sometimes happens when you're using stranded cotton it's easy to fix though so don't panic I'm just stitching along that first edge and I want to show you how to turn a corner so I've brought my needle up right at the point of that petal and that's forming my last stitch on that side so now I'll come back down and meet the previous stitch and I've got my line going right up to the point there now I'm going to bring my needle down on the next side of my petal so I effectively turn the corner and I bring my needle back down at the point again so I've got two stitches there forming the point of that petal and that gives you a complete line with no gaps and gives you a really neat point as well so I'm just going to finish stitching all the way back down to the centre of the flower and then I can finish my thread off on the back so that creates a solid line around my flower I'm going to work all the way around the outside and I'm going to vary the shades that I use as well I'm going to use some of my lighter yellow and my darker yellow because I want to sort of coordinate the threads with the fabrics that I've sandwiched underneath so I'm going to do that and then we'll come back right so I've made a start on this process so that you can see where we're heading so I've got my sandwich at the back and if you've forgotten after all your stitching what order you've put your fabrics in you've got that little corner there that you can go back and check with so what we're going to do is remove layers of fabric to reveal the fabrics underneath so for the center I've cut through all of the layers to get right the way down to the brown at the back and then the petals I'm matching up with my fabric so where I've got my pale yellow I'm going through to the stripe where I've got the bright yellow I'm going through to my solid yellow and where I've got my dark yellow I'm going all the way through to the spot fabric and what we're going to do is cut as close to 
the stitch lines as we can without actually cutting the stitches and that's really important we want to keep our stitching intact that's going to be what holds everything in place so we've got a seam ripper here and that's going to be my way into the fabric now this allows you to cut just the fabric that you need rather than going in at the center so i'm going to use the tip of my seam ripper to just catch the very first layer of fabric so i've got a bright yellow piece here and we're just going to take the top layer away and i'm just trying to hook that top layer without going through any deeper and um, so it might take a few attempts and then i'm just going to slide my seam ripper just enough so that I can get my scissor blades in and I'm going to use the width of the scissor blade as a guide so I'm sort of lining the scissor blade up with the stitching and I'm just going to cut along up to the point it really helps if your scissors are sharp to the tip so embroidery scissors are ideal for this I'm just going to go right up to the tip then turn my work and work my way back down the other side so I'm only going through that surface layer of blue fabric and I'm using the scissor blades to feel my way inside that sandwich so that I can make sure I'm not cutting away things that I don't want to cut so I'm just easing my way around I'm being really careful not to cut any stitching and then I can work my way back up and I take away that piece intact. If I need to, I can go back in and just shave off any rough edges, just snipping away there, just to neaten it up. But that blue fabric has come away intact in one piece, and I am keeping hold of that because all my scraps are going to be saved. We may well use these shapes in a later panel. So don't throw anything away. So that's through to my first layer. Let's have a go at going through to our second layer now. So again, I've got my seam ripper. I'm just catching that top surface layer of fabric and easing my way in. Then I get my embroidery scissors in and just cut away my blue fabric just like I did before. It really helps if you hold the fabric under tension so you can see I've got the blue fabric there in my left hand and I'm just pulling it away from where I'm cutting and it does make it much easier to cut away what you need to cut away and you get a much neater line if you just keep that fabric under tension so that's me through to my first layer just got a bit of a ragged edge there that I'm just going to trim off so it's possible to neaten things up as you go so now we need to go through to our next layer that's where the spot fabric is so now I'm hooking into the yellow fabric and I'm just going to cut that one away as well. So again, I want to keep my scissors as close to the stitching as I possibly can. And I'm just easing my way around there, just cutting really gently until I'm through to my next layer. Now you can cut away more than one layer at a time. It is possible to do that. But I find whenever I've done that in the past, I've made mistakes. So I would rather just take my time and go layer by layer and get a really neat finish. So now we're going to go all the way through to our third layer. And I've got a pale yellow petal here, cutting away the blue. Then I go in and cut away my solid yellow, which is my second layer of fabric. Now I'm going to go back in and cut away my third layer of fabric, which is the yellow spot. And underneath that is my stripe. And I'm going to just repeat that process all the way around to cut away all of the petals. 
so here we go that's all my petals cut away i really like the random effect that i've created there you could alternate them but i quite like mixing it up so i've sort of randomized it a bit so now i'm going to cut away my tacking stitches we've made it easy for ourselves because we've kept our knots on the surface and i'm not going to cut all the stitches i'm just going to pull them out with my seam ripper so i'm just going to ease that thread out um, if you want to be really frugal, you can use this again for some tacking in a later project because the thread is intact. So there we go. Now, we could leave it there if we want to, but you can see there's quite a lot of bulk in that fabric there. So what I'm going to do is just cut away the unused fabric it just removes a little bit of chunkiness and takes away that sort of ridge that diamond ridge around the design so i'm just cutting in between the petals again being careful not to cut any of the stitching you can see that those ridge lines have gone now so what i thought might be nice would be to add some extra stitching on the surface of this so i'm just marking my halfway point top and bottom just so that I can create some guidelines and what we're going to do is add some canter stitching now you might know this is borrow stitching Japanese slow stitch is called borrow stitching and canter is the Indian equivalent and the the word actually means rags it, and it's used as a quilting technique to reuse old scraps of fabric so we're going to use that technique to add some lines of stitching so i've got my bright yellow again here i've got two strands again i've put in some guidelines just half a centimeter apart just to give me a bit of a feel for where i'm stitching and i'm just going to add in some lines of running stitch so i've marked in my seam allowance there i've started just inside that seam allowance so that when my panels are put together there isn't a, a sort of really obvious end to my stitching and i'm just going to work my way along each line in some running stitch so it's just in and out of the fabric and i like to make my running stitches so that the space between them is shorter than the actual stitch length i just think that looks better rather than having even gaps and stitches so i'm just going up to the edge of my flower i'm trying to keep my hands out of the way if you think i'm <laughs> stitching quite strangely i'm trying to keep my hands out of the way so that you can see what i'm doing so i've just got my line of running stitches there and i'm just going to make some random lines so i'm just bringing my needle up a little bit further down on the next line and going back the way I came and now I've got some white two strands again and I'm just stitching in between with some white there and I'm just going to add lines like that in different shades of yellow and white and blue I'm going to create a sort of band either side of my flower just to add a little bit of visual interest you could do it a third of the way down or a third of the way up if you want to you could even work diagonally but i think i'm just going to go straight across the middle so i'm going to put that in and then we'll come back so here's my finished block we've got our reverse applique sunflower and i've got my canter stitching either side and if i bring it up close you can see a little bit better i've got different shades of yellow and white and blue in there and i really like the way this stitching creates these little furrows and ridges in between the stitches you can see it better on the right hand side than the left the stitches are more lined up so if you line up your running stitches you'll get those little quilted ridges and i really love this block i think it's really happy and bright and sunny it's a very different block to the ones that we've created so far so i hope you've enjoyed 
stitching that if you have enjoyed it please do give us a thumbs up hit that like button it really helps other people find our video do share your versions of this block at hashtag fsh23quilt and so that we can see all of our block fours together you could also add hashtag fsh23quilt4 thanks so much for watching if you want to have a go at some more reverse applique you can click on this video down here and I'll put a video up here that's best for you. If you'd like to subscribe, just click on our logo down here. It makes it really easy for you. Have a great week stitching your sunny sunflower block and I will see you in the next video. Have a great week, everybody. Happy crafting and I'll see you soon. Bye.